Hey, this is FJ Max and welcome back to another video. And today I'm going to be showing you guys how you can create a really cool animated handwritten text effect using Adobe Illustrator and Adobe After Effects. So let's get started by making our handwritten text using Adobe Illustrator. So to create this, you basically have two options. So one, you can write something on a piece of paper, take a picture of it, import it into Illustrator and manually trace it using the pen tool. Or if you have access to a drawing tablet, you can use the brush tool and basically draw what you would like. So I do have access to a drawing tablet, so I'm going to use that. So I'm just gonna write something simple. So I'm just gonna write, hello. Um, of course you can uh, give this several tries so um, there we go that seems acceptable all right so the next thing we're going to do is use the ellipse tool which is l on the keyboard and we're going to press shift and click and drag to create a perfect circle all right the next thing we're going to do is create a gradient and basically any gradient will work for this so i'm just going to quickly create a simple gradient with three stops so I'm just gonna make one with a dark blue, dark blue, and a light blue in the middle. And if you're looking for inspiration for uh, for gradients, then I suggest you go to the swatches panel, click on this button over here, and look in the gradients and see all these different categories. So I already have a gradient in place, so let's move on with the effect. So next thing we're going to do is hold Alt and Shift and click and drag this to the right to create a duplicate. And then we're going to select both of these, go to Object, Blend, and then Make. And then we're going to go to Object, Blend, Blend Options, and we're going to change the spacing to Specified Distance, and we're going to make this 2, with the orientation being the first one and we're gonna click OK. Lastly, we're gonna select the blended shapes and the stroke, and we're gonna press Object, Blend, and Replace Spline. And now this is gonna create this really cool effect over here. However, there is something off with it, and it's that it looks like it's being drawn from right to left. So to fix this, what we're gonna to wanna to do is select our stroke, go to Object, go to path and reverse path direction. Now, as you can see, this has made our stroke a little bit weird, but we can easily fix this. First, I'm just gonna delete this stray point over here. And I'm gonna take this point over here and move it all the way to the right where it's supposed to be. All right, so our stroke is fixed and the effect is completed. Now we have to prepare it to import into After Effects. So what we wanna do is select this Go to Object, Expand, and select Object and Fill and Expand to Gradient Mesh. And we're gonna press OK. Next thing we're gonna wanna do is ungroup it. So I'm just gonna click the ungroup button over here. The last thing we wanna do is separate all of these circles into a top level layer because each of these circles is actually just a sub layer underneath one top level layer. So to separate it, we're just going to click on this target button on the right over here and go to the hamburger menu, click on release to layers sequence. And this is going to allow us to select all of the sub layers over here. And we can go over here and just drag it out of our top level layer. Now we can just scroll down and delete the blank one. And now all of the circles are in their own layer and they're all ready to import into After Effects. So now you just have to save it and let's jump into After Effects. All right, so now we're in After Effects and it's time to import the file in. Now I'm just gonna drag and drop the file into After Effects. 
All right, so when you're importing it, you're gonna see this dialog box and we wanna make sure the import kind is as composition and footage dimensions as layer size. Now, before I click OK, I want to let you guys know that since the Illustrator file has so many layers in it, I think up to 500 layers in it, the file is going to take a long time to import into After Effects, about three to five minutes. So I want you guys to make sure that you're patient as it's importing in and don't quit After Effects as it's importing in, unless it takes maybe about 15 minutes because that's quite a long time. All right, the file has been imported, so let's just hop into the composition and take a look at it. And as you can see, the Illustrator file that I made, I actually made it a little bit small in terms of size on purpose so that it will take less time to import. But obviously we can fix that if we want to make it go into high resolution comps. So to fix it, all we have to do is select all of the layers over here, which is like 600 apparently. So I was a little bit wrong in my estimate before I imported in. So uh, once it selects all of the layers, all we have to do is click on the continuously rasterize button right over here. And if you don't see this column, you can just press toggle switch modes until you see it. So I'm just gonna click on it and this will probably take a, maybe a minute or two since there are so many layers. But once it's done, we can move on to the next step. All right, all the layers have been continuously rasterized. And now if we zoom in, there's a little bit less sharpness, but obviously that'll be a little more apparent when we take it into a high resolution comp. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find our first circle. So our first circle is this one over here, and we're gonna make note of that. So next thing we're gonna do is scroll all the way to the top and shift click to select all of these layers. All right, uh, it's gonna take a second, obviously, since there are a lot of layers. So what we're gonna do is go to the zeroth frame, which we're already on, and press alter option and right square bracket, and it's gonna cut it all down to a single frame. And then next, what we're gonna do is go to the to bottom most layer, which is the first layer. And we're gonna control or command click on the layer to deselect it. We're just gonna drag it one frame to the right. And then we're gonna right click on our selected layers. And then we're gonna go to keyframe assistant, sequence layers. And we're just gonna hit okay. Select all of our layers again and then go to the end and then hit alter option, right square bracket, and there we go. So now if we hit play, as you can see, it's going very, very, very slowly. So to fix this, all we're gonna need to do is first go to our last frame or and go a few frames forward and cut our composition off at that point. And then we're gonna right click and then say trim comp to work area. Next thing we're gonna do is create a new composition 1920 by 1080 and we're gonna make it 60 frames per second with a duration of 15 seconds. Now we're gonna hit okay. Next thing we're gonna do is drag in our original composition. Then what we're gonna do is hit this button to continuously rasterize it and make it high resolution for us. So we're gonna click it and boom. All we have to do is scale it up to see the effects. So now we can see that it's nice high resolution. All right, next thing we wanna do is we wanna adjust the speed a little bit. And to do that, we're gonna right click time and enable time remapping. And I'm just gonna make this maybe a three second or something like that and I'm gonna cut the comp to that much as well, or sorry, cut the layer to that long as well. And now we can see it's going a little bit faster. That looks pretty nice. And of course, if you wanna add some uh, speed ramps to this using the graph editor, you can do so. I'm just gonna use this motion script over here to apply some ease curves that I've already defined. All right, so here is our final effect. And if you did enjoy this tutorial, make sure you leave a like and subscribe for more tutorials coming soon to the channel. As always, thanks guys for watching and see you guys later. Peace.